So recently in this chapter we said that energy from the sun, insulation from the sun, will either be within the Earth's atmosphere and if it makes it to the geosphere, that energy will either be absorbed or that energy will be transmitted or that particular energy will be um, scattered or redirected or reflected depending upon the nature of the particle and the wavelength of the energy. Um, and so in general, and I think I mentioned this recently, that if um, that particular energy of wavelength is absorbed by that particular particle, then that particular particle, whether it's a gas in the Earth's atmosphere or whether it's the geosphere itself, that absorbs that radiation will become warmer. And we talked about the fact that all matter is in motion, and actually the molecular motion of that matter would increase. It will get warmer. So the term absorptivity then talks about the degree to which a particular um, material, gas or particle, will absorb a particular wavelength or set of wavelengths. Absorptivity then is, in, is, is describes the matter's ability to absorb a particular form of radiation. So I, meant, I mentioned that it's specific. Um, it's specific both to the wavelength of energy and to the particle that's interacting with that energy. So for instance, one form of energy coming from the sun is ultraviolet radiation. And we've talked about layers of the Earth's atmosphere and we said within the stratosphere we have this layer of good ozone, O3. That particular molecule, O3, is good actually will interact with incoming ultraviolet radiation and it will absorb that particular wavelength, UV radiation. And in doing so, it, those O3 molecules go faster and they, they heat up themselves. And um, another specific example, in the Earth's atmosphere, we said two variable gases in the Earth's atmosphere are H2O vapor, water gas molecules, and carbon dioxide. Um, they vary from location to location, day to day, and kind of we talked about how they vary. But these gas particles will interact specifically with um, infrared, IR, radiation. Which, remember, infrared is a little bit longer than um, red, the color red. So um, there again, a particular particle, a particular wavelength coming from the sun. And as it interacts, it gets warmer. And so, in general, this is kind of um, how we have, um, and we're going to talk later about greenhouse gases, or we did talk about greenhouse gases kind of having a warming effect. Um, so, um, another way to kind of think of the fact that water vapor in particular, probably more so than carbon dioxide, will actually um, intersect or interact with um, infrared radiation coming from the sun um, on a relative we're going to talk about humidity um, in unit two actually humidity is if, if somebody says the air is really humid what they mean is there's a fair bit of where to go fair bit of water gas or water vapor in the atmosphere so here you go if there's a fair bit of water gas or water vapor um, what it can do is interact, absorb energy from infrared radiation to a certain extent that's coming from the sun. So on those muggy days, quite honestly, I know you're going to feel kind of, uh, kind of hot, that sort of thing. But um, the piercingness, a little bit of the sting of the sun's energy actually is taken away by those water molecules interacting with incoming solar radiation. So that was when energy is absorbed. What about when energy is redirected? Two forms of redirection are reflection, and I'm going to kind of show you what reflection means. Reflection just means you know the direction it's going to be redirected to, versus scattered. And scattered just means kind of randomly the energy is redirected, but otherwise they're very similar. Um, so here is um, an example of reflection, where, um, and you can talk about the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection. Um, I'm not necessarily going to do that. But we know that it comes in here, okay, the light beam from the sun, and it's going to be reflected right there. Compare that to scattering. So can you tell the difference here? Here is a particle that is actually scattering incoming radiation from the sun. 
The difference is it's going in multiple directions. Both of them are redirecting that sunlight, so, or I should say redirecting that energy from the sun. If it were transmitting, the energy would have gone like this, but it didn't. Okay, so these are both forms of redirection. You know, um, how do we get redirection? Well, it depends upon the particle in the sun, excuse me, in the particle in the Earth's atmosphere that the energy from the sun is, inter is interacting with. And, quite frankly, it depends upon the wavelength or the energy of light that's coming from the sun, whether um, this sort of redirection is going to occur. Okay, I like this. I think this is kind of neat. So if you think of the fact that radiation will travel in a straight line, and actually kind of related to that, that's why we have oftentimes have, have shadows. Okay, So um, direct light coming, I think I'll try to make a little picture up here this semester. Let's see. Let's make this the sun. Okay, I'm going to make, let's see if this works. This is my tree. Okay, and here's direct light coming from the sun. And we know that actually the tree is going to cast a shadow here. Okay, I'm just going to kind of show part of that. The sun's relatively high in the sky right now, right at, as I've shown this, so it's going to be kind of a squatty shadow. Okay. Um, those would be the sun's direct light, direct rays hitting the tree, casting a shadow. Well, we have this phenomenon called um, diffused light. And diffused light, because of diffused light, if I put, oh gosh, I don't know what necessarily to call it, but I'm going to put an object there. I'm, I wish I'd made this bigger. But I'm going to put an object in the shadow that that tree is casting from the direct light. Now, can I see that object? Yes. Am I seeing that object illuminated because of direct light from the sun? No. I'm seeing that object illuminated because of diffuse light. And diffuse light is basically light of all colors of the rainbow, all components of light. So it ends up being a white light um, scattered in all directions. So kind of, and this happens anywhere there is something other than a vacuum. The Earth's atmosphere and particles do this quite nicely. And so I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm trying to show scattered light here. This is just miscellaneous light of all wavelengths of color. So it ends up being white landing on that object there. Okay, Because of diffused light, we can see objects in shadows that are cast from direct light. I hope that makes sense. Um, yeah, um, And I've kind of looked it up a little bit. If you think of, um, now the Earth's atmosphere is pretty healthy. We got a fair bit of stuff in the Earth's atmosphere. Um, if you visit a planet that doesn't have an atmosphere per se, you're not going to see this sort of diffuse light that's going to basically illuminate objects that are in shadows. Um, so I've kind of played around a little bit with that, looking at um, objects um, um, objects hiding in shadows, like on the moon, where they've been photographed. It's interesting. <laughs>